Sergeant Chief. Good afternoon. I'm Captain Jamie Frederick with the First Coast Guard District Response Department, which oversees search and rescue operations under Rear Admiral John Mauger, the First Coast Guard District Commander. I'll provide a brief recap of our coordinated search efforts for the 21-foot submersible with five people on board, along with providing an update on current search efforts and plans for the next 24 hours. On behalf of all the men and women of the United States Coast Guard and our search partners, we offer our most heartfelt thoughts and prayers for the five crew members, their families, and their loved ones. Our crews are working around the clock to ensure that we are doing everything possible to locate the Titan and the five crew members. Yesterday, we stood up a unified command consisting of expertise from the United States Coast Guard, the United States Navy, Canadian Armed Forces and Coast Guard, and the Titan's parent company, Ocean Gate Expedition. This is a complex search effort which requires multiple agencies with subject matter expertise and specialized equipment. While the U.S. Coast Guard has assumed the role of search and rescue mission coordinator, we do not have all of the necessary expertise and equipment retired, required in a search of this nature. The Unified Command brings that expertise and additional capability together to maximize effort in solving this very complex problem. We're out of order here. As a recap, on Sunday, the, uh, the Coordination uh, Command Center in Boston received a report from the Canadian Expedition vessel, uh, Polar Prince, of an overdue 21-foot submarine Titan with five people on board. The Titan was attempting to dive on the wreck of the Titanic approximately 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland. Approximately one hour and 45 minutes into the scheduled dive, the Polar Prince lost all communication with the Titan. The Polar Prince conducted an initial search and then requested Coast Guard assistance. The U.S. Coast Guard in Boston assumed the responsibility of search and rescue mission coordinator and immediately launched search assets. Since Sunday, the Coast Guard has coordinated search efforts with the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard, Air National Guard aircraft, and the Polar Prince, which have searched a combined 7,600 square miles an area larger than the state of Connecticut. These search efforts have focused on both surface, with C-130 aircraft searching by sight and with radar, and subsurface with P-3 aircraft were able to drop and monitor sonar buoys. To date, those search efforts have not yielded any results. Search efforts have continued through last night and today. Today, the vessel Deep Energy, 194 meter pipe laying vessel arrived on scene with underwater ROV capability. They have rendezvoused with the vessel Polar Prince and commenced an ROV dive at the last known of the position of the Titan and the approximate position of the Titanic wreck. That operation is currently ongoing. Additionally, a Canadian P-3 aircraft is currently conducting a six hour search of the area and several C-130 aircraft and another P-3 are scheduled to fly this afternoon and this evening. The Canadian Coast Guard cutter or vessel, John Cabot, is scheduled to arrive later this evening and several other Canadian Coast Guard vessels and the Coast Guard cutter Sycamore are en route. Additionally, the U.S. Coast Guard has um, the U.S. Navy's SUPSAL Supervisor of Salvage and Diving Command is working with U.S. Transportation Command to bring additional assets to the search area. These more cap capable assets will be staged at a St. John's for further transport to the search area. There are also several private vessels, research vessels, with ROV capabilities that are making preparations to join the efforts. So I wanna reiterate, uh, this is a very complex search and the unified team is working around the clock to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in an effort to solve this very complex problem. We'll, co we'll continue to provide updates as they become available. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with the crew and the families and their loved ones. We will provide unwavering effort as we continue the search. And I think at this time we'll open it up and take a few questions. Me, uh, Chief, can you tell that for me? So 
So each of the ROVs, uh, so, so that's kind of a vague question, right? That uh, ROVs have different capability. It's our understanding the current ROV that is deployed uh, at the site now has some limited capability, uh, it has a camera on board, um, but, but again, each of those is different and uh, we'll be gathering more information as that uh, operation uh, goes on through the day. Captain, how many Tom hours of uh, If your submersibles can find this sub, is there any way to retrieve it and save the people on board? Yeah, so right now, all of our efforts are focused on finding the sub. Um, what I will tell you is we have a group of, of uh, our nation's best experts in the Unified Command, and if we get to that point, uh, those experts will be looking at what the next course of action is. Captain, how many hours of but, oxygen are left that you know of or that you can estimate right now so, on the submersible, and is it a, has, does it have to be approved or regulated? Sure. So, so first of all, that's, that's an estimate, right? Because we know uh, from the, uh, the the data we were using uh, as a starting point was 96 hours. We know at this point we're approximately uh, about 40, 41 hours. 41 hours left. Yes, And does, correct. It, does it have to be approved or regulated? This submersible, does it go through anything through, that you know of? Yeah, I'm not sure uh, of, of the exact technical uh, piece of that. We know there's about uh, there's about 40 hours of, of breathable air uh, left based on that initial report. Again, uh, that was just the initial report based on 96 hours uh, from when the vessel um, Captain, submerged. Captain, even, even, even with that amount of time that's left, let's say 41 hours or so, if you were to find the submersible at this moment, would that give you enough time to save these five people on board? Yeah, I... So, so listen, I, I don't know the answer to that question. What I will tell you is we will do everything in our power to, uh, to effect a rescue. Um, again, uh, it's going to depend on you know, if, if the ROV finds something, it's going to depend on what they find, what, what needs to be, uh, what steps need to be taken next. And, uh, and really that is for the experts within the Unified Command um, to take a look at and then, and then uh, decide what the best course of action is. Yeah, um, so. Right now, uh, our effort and our focus is on searching with what we know. Uh, when, as soon as we received the report on Sunday evening, we immediately uh, launched search efforts. Uh, we flew assets that evening, and we've continued constant uh, surface and air asset searches uh, since that point. Go ahead. Sorry. Well. It, it's a, this is a complex search, and um, it's complex for a variety of reasons. Um, we're, we're, you know, you're talking about a search area that's 900 miles east of Cape Cod, uh, 400 miles um, south of uh, St. John's. So logistically speaking, it's hard to bring assets to bear. It takes time, it takes coordination. Um, and then we're dealing with uh, you know, two pieces of, you're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search, and frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. Captain, will the Navy, will the U.S. Navy or the Canadian Navy be able to get salvage equipment on time before the air runs out? Obviously, uh, getting salvage equipment on scene is a top priority. Uh, Unified Command is working through that to prioritize uh, what equipment um, we can get there. There are ongoing operations right now uh, via the U.S. Navy and Transcom to get, to get equipment uh, staged in St. John's and to get it on scene. I can't give you an exact timeline of when that's going to happen, but what I can tell you is uh, there is a full press, full court press effort uh, to get equipment on scene as quickly as we can. Is that equipment, is that equipment already on the East Coast though, or is it coming from the Pacific, for example? No, the, so some of the equipment that's coming is coming from the East Coast, but again, we're talking about very heavy equipment. Um, it, it's a complicated transport operation, but the best uh, professionals in the world are working it, and that's uh, U.S. Transcom. Yeah, when it comes to the, uh, the equipment, can you go into more detail? Do you have a Curve 21 that, uh, that's being shipped over to that location? And since you don't have the fleet tug vessel to be, be a batch with the commission, what other assets do you have? Do you have civilian ships that can help? Yeah, there, so like I said, there are, some, there are several civilian ships uh, 
that have offered services heading that way. There are additional Coast Guard cutters. Uh, we hope to have a Canadian Coast Guard cutter on scene this evening. We hope that they may be able to assume on-scene commander. Uh, Polar Prince has been doing a, a great job with those duties, uh, but if we could take some of that uh, from them, uh, that would be good. But your, your question about specific equipment, I, I'm not gonna get into talking about specific equipment. Frankly, I'm not an expert on what that equipment is, but again, I can tell you, we have experts in the Unified Command that are going through that, prioritizing what we need and then how we get it on scene. Can you tell us about the personnel from Boston, uh, how many people from here are out there and also what equipment? From Boston specifically, yeah, from Boston. so the so Boston, where, where Boston plays a role is the the command center, the rescue and coordination center is here in Boston. Um, the the aircraft that are coming in are coming from different locations, um, but uh, but the command uh, structure is, is being worked out of uh, out of Boston. And I think we have time for for two more questions. In all your years of experience, just how unique is it? Has the Coast Guard ever had to deal with something like this? Well, I. Yeah, I don't want to speak about if the Coast Guard is ever. I would tell you it's a unique operation. It's a challenging operation, um, but uh, but right now we're focused on on uh, putting everything we can at it and uh, and, and searching um, as hard as we can and getting the assets out there um, as quickly as we can. And for other private companies, the other assets that are rushing to the area, what sort of assets do they have? Do they have ROVs? Do they have similar technology to Ocean Gate? Do they have yeah, there's, so there there are some additional assets with with ROVs. Um, there is uh, one asset that, may, that is working to get on scene with a decompression chamber. Um, so those are all pieces that are coming together and, uh, and we're working those logistical challenges to get them, uh, get them there. And I think we'll take uh, one more. Is a DP rescue a realistic prospect? What would that look like? Well, I, I can't tell you exactly what it would look like. I would tell you that, uh, you know, we are out there, we're searching. We, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be searching and putting all effort out there um, I think that, you know, if the sub is located, that's a question that then, then the, uh, the experts need to look at what is the best course of action uh, for recovering the sub. But I think it's going to depend on that particular situation and, uh, and if we encounter that. Sir, is it true that the British offered assistance and they were told we don't need your assistance at this point? No, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Again, what I would tell you, though, is that the Unified Command is working through, uh, working through prioritizing. We, and we know that there's equipment out there. Um, that can be brought uh, to the scene. Um, the Unified Command's working through prioritizing what equipment we need and then how we get it there. And the so, French are also responding to the ship as well? Yes, that's my understanding, correct. What and uh, I think we're gonna wrap it there. there. So, yep, thank you. Yeah.